to all of my DIYers, non-DIYers, and DIY enthusiasts, welcome to the Crafty Nana channel. Today I will show you how I created my coastal decor spring lantern. I only needed four items to create my lantern. 12 dowels, a box of jingle blocks, some cotton rope, and a glass candle holder. Later in this video, you will see where I added some seashell embellishments and dried flowers that I had on hand to complete the overall coastal look. My lantern video is a part of Kenya's Decor Corner Spring Lantern Collaboration. Kenya's channel is everything pertaining to home decor, shopping, cleaning, cooking, and inspirational designs. She has some incredible videos, so please go by and visit her channel. The link to her channel is in my description area. To create the initial base of the lantern, I needed 12 of the blocks. I arranged three portrait style and then three landscape style. I repeated the pattern which gave the bottom a look of parquet flooring. I used E6000 to hold the blocks together. While gluing the blocks together, I used a skewer to help keep the blocks evenly aligned. But you can use something like a ruler or another piece of wood, whatever you have on hand. I also used a wet paper towel to wipe away any glue overages. I found that just plain simple water worked, uh, but I have also used alcohol, uh, anything that you can quickly wipe the glue away with before it dries, so that way it doesn't leave, you know, that overage look or the additional glue that spilt over look. Since I'm keeping my lantern the color that it is for now, I wanted to make sure that I didn't show any of those spillages or anything like that. I set the bottom aside to dry for a couple of hours. Then to give the bottom a finished look, I glued four sets of two block insides together. I then glued those sets around the outside of the base. So, if you are keeping count, the amount of supplies needed now increase from four to six. In addition to the dowels, which we will get to a little later, the jingle blocks, which we are currently using, the rope, and the candle holder, I needed glue, which I used E6000, but you can use any kind of wood glue or anything else that you have on hand. And now I'm going to add some small wooden blocks to fill in the edges of the base. The blocks are being glued to the upper area of the ends, opposed to being aligned with the bottom of the base. So basically, the tops should be flush with each other all the way around. I set the base to the side, so I can now start making the top of the lantern. I'm using or I'm gluing four sets of two blocks insides together like I did for the bottom. I laid the blocks flat this time opposed to standing them up and glued one of the squares on either end of the two sets or of two sets of the blocks. I then glued the other two sets of the blocks to form a square. Now I have a, my top is basically the same dimension as my bottom. So they should align perfectly at the end. To create the top's dome effect, I'm gluing a block on top of each corner on an angle. For the second row, I'm gluing the block over each of the open spaces. When it was all said and done, I had five full rows of stacked blocks. You will notice that as the blocks are being stacked, the opening in the middle is getting small.
For the sixth and seventh rows, I used only two blocks for each row to completely enclose the middle. I then added one small square to serve as the topper. The next step is to build the columns. To make the four columns that will hold up the lantern top, I'm gluing three dowels together. I'm wrapping blue painter's tape to the top and the bottom of the glue dowels to hold them in place while the glue dries. Now that the columns are set, it's time to attach them to the base. I'm taping a block at an angle at each corner to help keep the column in place while they adhere to the base. I'm adding glue to the bottom of each column. I'm placing tape around each column to hold them against the tape block, which will help keep it straight up. I let the glue on the lantern columns dry for about an hour. Then I removed all of the blue tape and the corner blocks that the columns were braced against. Not too bad thus far. Now I'm going to glue the top of the lantern to the top of the columns. Once the glue is added to the ends of the columns and the columns were placed into position, I wrapped a piece of tape around each one to help keep the columns from moving. So, here comes the really cool part, giving this lantern a real coastal vibe. I'm wrapping the white cotton rope around the base of the lantern. While wrapping it, I place a dab of glue to each column and gently applied pressure to the rope to ensure the rope stayed in place. I wrapped it around about five times before I reached the end of the rope. You could not go wrong with, hey, adding a few more, you know, rows of rope if you had a longer one. But I think the five rows were just the right amount and the right height for this. Time for a few embellishments. I'm adding some dabs of hot glue to the back of a white starfish, which I'm going to place right in the middle of my lantern. The next step is to take care of the extra rope. To keep it from unraveling, I'm wrapping a piece of tape around the rope before cutting it. I'm using hot glue to tuck the rope behind the column. I'm adding some seashells to the neck of my candle holder. I'm using hot glue to adhere the shells. Now to add a touch of spring to my coastal lantern, I'm adding a dried floral pick with some dried reeds. I'm applying a dab of glue to adhere my spring pick to the lantern. Off camera, I glued the rope to the top of my lantern to make a hanger for it. I can't wait for you to see it. Let me know what you think. I love the way my lantern came out. As of right now, I have it sitting on top of my faux aquarium. I call this area of the house my coastal corner. Remember this video is a part of Kenya's Decor Corner Spring Lantern Collab. The playlist is in my description box. Please review all of the participants' video, like, share, and subscribe to show your support for new and upcoming YouTubers and for some that have been around for a while that you may have never noticed. Thank you Kenya for hosting this wonderful collaboration. I'm Angela, better known as Crafty Nana. Thank you for viewing my video. If you are new or returning to my channel, I thank you for your support. 
And remember to add a touch of love to each crafted piece.